Hello everyone. So hope you all are fine. So this is GS Mains paper on July 2017, and this is the part three. I mean this is part three, and this will be the last part. After that, I will start GS paper two August August 2017 from tomorrow. Okay, so let's start GS Mains paper one. So we have done till ninth topic, right? Now this is the tenth topic. That is cultural freedom of states. In which particular area will it lie? So it can lie in salient features of Indian society. Diversity of India. It can be a part of social empowerment, right? It can be uh, communalism, regionalism, secularism. So there are two topics, and it can be clubbed together in both those topics. So let's talk about cultural freedom of states. So what is the issue? So the issue is non-Hindi speaking regions are coming up with creative ways of fighting for their cultural freedom. So they are, uh, what do you say, devising different methods to assert their linguistic, what do you say, linguistic independence or Uh, they don't want India to become a Hindi nation, right? So that is the whole thing. So let's talk about it. So discussion about cultural freedom of state regions within India, India's federated uh, federated polity. So there are lots and lots of discussion which is going on uh, regarding cultural freedom of states. Now, what are the examples where these states are showing their cultural freedom or trying to come up with creative ways? So example first is protest against use of Hindi signs in Bangalore's metro last month. So in Bangalore Metro, there were certain protests against the use of Hindi language. Second was, although second second example which is showing this uh, what is the creative ways of state is little bit stupid. Why? Because the second example is in crudality towards complaint that A R Rahman should have performed more songs in Hindi at a concert in London. So there was a uh, concert in London which A R Rahman did, and he sang songs, uh, means major songs, because. We all know, na? He he generally uh, sang songs in Tamil, right? Composed songs in Tamil, and uh, yeah. So he was, but at that point of time where where he was performing, so other people started demanding that he should perform more songs in Hindi. And these states, the southern states, Tamil Nadu, is what do you say? Is incredulating it them. What do you say? They are opposing it. That they should shouldn't be the case, right? Okay. So now there is a need for public discussion of ethics of linguistic coexistence. And it is more urgent than it has ever been. Remember the word linguistic coexistence. There is another key word related to these kind of topics: linguistic imperialism. So linguistic coexistence is very much needed. Okay. Sick project of making India a Hindi nation needs a fast burial, right? India is not a Hindi nation. India is a pluralistic society. India is a multi-ethnic culture, right? And it should stay that way, right? Okay. So this was about cultural freedom of states. Now let's talk about again a social empowerment issue. So Maharashtra has criminalized social ostracism, ostracization, or social ostracism. What is social ostracism? So suppose you have you are a, uh, from a particular caste, right? And you married someone from other caste, right? And you went to your village, and there they had certain like informal panchayats, and they said that no, you cannot live in this society anymore because you have Married outside your caste, right? So these 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 are example of social ostracism, and Maharashtra has criminalized. So Maharashtra's law criminalizing social ostracism. It is a template for other state. It is an example for other state. The other state should start doing this thing. It targets uh, this particular law targets pernicious practice of informal caste panchayats or dominant sections using ostracism as a means of enforcing social conformity, right? So all these informal things. Will go right, like they have to go. I mean, especially in Maharashtra. Maybe um, let's let's keep our fingers crossed that this will be followed by other states as well. And it is a and the, actually the thing is, it is not a proud movement for country. And special legislation is required to prohibit social discrimination, ostracism, and practices repugnant to human dignity. So this is not a proud movement that Maharashtra has to frame this kind of a law, right? This is a sorry state. This depicts the sorry state and the sorry condition of our. Country. Um, uh, what do you say? One or two days ago, I was reading thing that in our in our country, life of life has become so cheap that 30 odd people died in Haryana because of one sadhu, one Baba. Can you imagine how life has become so cheap in our country? 30 odd people died. Nothing happened. No responsibility was accounted for. Nothing happened. And just because for some sadhu, for some Baba, so it, it, it's a sorry state. Life is very cheap in our country and. This is not a great precedent, right? It has to change sooner or later, maybe sooner. So, what the thing is, yeah. Let's let's come on to this topic now. This 
legislation is it's a great step although it's not a proud moment but it is given prevailing circumstances any legislative assault on abhorrent social practices ought to be welcome so this legislative assault on ab abhorrent social practice of social ostracism should be welcome and it should be followed by other states now let's talk about cow vigilantes and lynching so see in hindu there are multiple articles on cow vigilantes and lynching so what i have done i have clubbed all those articles along with articles of indian express and i have summarized certain points so let's talk about those points see in rajasthan we all know na flood came right so what happened hundreds of hunt means lots of hundreds of cows get got washed away in those floods right so there was an article and it was a great article which was written so that article said that horrific conditions of cows in rajasthan floods hundreds washed away but cow vigilantes which were so active elsewhere were nowhere to be seen so these cow vigilantes they are active everywhere but in rajasthan floods when hundreds of cows washed away they were nowhere to be seen right so what does it show it shows a it shows it shows they are up to something else right they are not there for protecting cows or something like that this is a whole, whole different issue altogether right so it was a very uh, what do you say it was a snide remark it was a snide article aimed at these cow vigilantes so called cow vigilantes okay now let's again talk about this 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 particular social empowerment issues now in a civilized society even one lynching is too many right but remember this data this data is very important 28 people killed in cow linked violence from 2010 to 2017 what does it mean 28 people have died in cow linked violence from 2010 to 2017 and see to in 2010 this this particular government was not in power right so it's not like only bjp ruled government because of bjp only this thing is happening even in the previous government also this cow linking thing was happening but yeah accepted it. it has increased somewhat in this particular Uh, what do you say, ministry or in this particular government? But that call and cheek was prevalent earlier also. And in any civilized society, the article is saying that one lynching is too many, and we have 28 people killed in cowling violence from 2010 to 2017. So that means again, life is very cheap in our country. So demand for an anti-lynching law. So there should be a demand for anti-lynching law. Plus, it should be accompanied by police reforms. Police reforms are also needed. So, if somebody asks you what is the like, they can ask you an interview. They can ask the questions in mains because this is a very hot topic. So, they can ask you. So, you can say that there should be an anti-lynching law. You can say there should be police reform. What else you can say? You can say society should be, what do you say, educated. Social education should be imparted in some way or the other, right? Now, this midday meal scheme, it is a very good initiative for promoting social empowerment. Uh, why? Because in midday meal scheme, nobody knows who is cooking food for whom, right? So, it 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 creates a certain kind of what do you say? It, it brings other castes. It brings people from different diversified societies, diversified region, diversified religion together, right? So it's a great thing. So all these things are needed, right? The narrow-mindedness has to go. Okay. So again, this was cow vigilantes and lynching. Okay. Now let's go to the next topic, which is brief history of the past 70 years. Now this is a static as well as dynamic topic, right? And this is a part of modern India post-independence, right? So let's talk about a brief history of past 70 years. Let's take a what is it? Visit uh, in of the last 70 years. Again, we are just summarizing the whole thing. See, this person of power is desirable for our democracy. This person of power is very, very important for our democracy because India is not some small European country. It is world's second largest country, population-wise, with great cultural and religious diversity. Now, absence of any real opposition to Congress for three decades after 1947 was responsible for India's slow progress, despite its quite spectacular. Sorry, spectacular. Again, this is a tongue twister. The word is spectacular beginning under Jawaharlal Nehru. So, even though we started very nicely after 1947, but the growth slowed. I mean, slow down or what do you say? Slow down. Why? Because there was no real opposition to Congress. Political parties becomes complacent when there is no opposition. Hope this does not happen with our BJP government, right? Hope all these other parties combine and they give means a little bit of competition. Okay, in 2019, okay. Now states now see the thing is states which witnessed political competition made most progress in that period. All the states which witnessed political competition they made more most progress. What are the examples for it? For it? Kerala communist government, right? Tamil Nadu, Himachal Pradesh. So remember these three states. They made good progress during that period when other states were stagnating because of lack of competition. In these states, these three states, political competition was there. Now Nehru talked of ending 
Nehru talked of in double quotes, so that is the exact statement of his. Nehru talked of ending poverty and ignorance and disease and inequality of opportunity. So he talked about ending poverty, he talked about ending ignorance, he talked about ending disease, and he talked about ending inequality of opportunity. If these things are not ended, then India the independence is no more than replacing colonial autocracy with native one. So we have to end poverty, we have to end ignorance, we have to end disease, and we have to end end inequality of opportunity otherwise it doesn't make any sense and it doesn't matter whether there is an autocratic government or a democratic one because the situation is not changing on the ground right okay now nehru ended his august 14 1947 midnight speech, uh, speech with so this was his speech and he this was the ending quotes of his of nehru speech what was what, what is what was he saying he was saying all of us to whatever religion we may belong are equally the children of India with equal rights, privileges and obligations. These lines are truer than before. Right now we need these lines. So I will reiterate it again. So what does he say? He said all of us to whatever religion we may belong are equally the children of India with equal rights, privileges and obligations. Do write it somewhere. Do write it in your essay. It's, it's very, very, very nice lines. So it's high time to remember that. This is a very crucial time to remember these lines. Okay. So I will I will keep it here only. Okay. Now GS Mains Paper One, July 2017 is done. So from tomorrow we'll start GS Mains Paper Two, August. August and there are lots and lots of articles in GS Mains Paper Two because I've covered lots of static as well as dynamic topics, right? So that will be a long session and I will try to complete it as soon as possible. And that will be a very very important session for all those people who are preparing for like October Mains, October Mains. So we'll be giving Mains in October. Plus for prelims people also because. Uh, this whole prelims thing has becoming more and more dynamic with each passing day, right? So prepare thoroughly, prepare each and everything, give your best and hope for the best. Thank you.